Hello everyone. So I doubt I'm going to be able to get this video out in time to help people with the first week of this mode, uh, but just in case any of you are still having difficulty clearing some of the maps and you want another example of somebody clearing the maps, uh, here you go. Uh, I do know some of my guildies are still struggling and some of them are just, you know, they just didn't really want to bother with it for the first week. And, you know, don't feel too discouraged by it. I would argue this is probably the hardest PvE content they've ever added to the game. Uh, plus, falling behind for one week is not a big deal. Uh, don't let the FOMO get to you too bad. I mean, you do want to clear this mode uh, soon-ish, so you can start picking up the weekly rewards. Uh, but don't stress too bad, because remember, on a week-to-week -week basis, uh, you're not falling behind that much. Uh, but of course, you don't want to put it off for months and months or whatever. Uh, so anyway, I just want to start by showing the four teams that I used here, and do kind of a quick summary before I move on to the four individual fights. So for the first map, as I mentioned in the past, uh, when I last talked about this mode, Emmerich and SP Narm are pretty essential here. I do have a couple guildies, and I know a couple people who don't have SP Narm. If you don't have SP Narm, the fight does get a bit harder, uh, but there are still ways around it. Uh, the important thing is to line up so that he doesn't use his breath attack on you, because that's probably the most dangerous attack he has. Uh, the single target isn't so bad. Uh, I think Emmerich is a unit everyone should be building. Uh, as for the other units, uh, like I mentioned in the past as well, uh, Licorice is really, really good. She's one of the best healers for this map. Uh, I also brought Liana as a secondary healer, and she also can act again if I need to push out some more damage against the boss. Uh, Chris is here to both heal people around the map and to dispel when she can stay near other people and also to damage the boss. So uh, units like her that can attack and heal and dispel at the same time are obviously very good. Uh, so of course, other units that are like Chris are like Rachel, arguably Deedlet, although I think Deedlet can be a little bit troublesome to use sometimes, uh, just because of her talent requiring her to run around a lot. Uh, there's some other units you can think of, like uh, Maya would kind of work in her place. Uh, so you can see I'm also using Lana here. Uh, she can be replaced by just about any long range mage if you want to. Uh, I actually haven't really used Lana since like way back near the beginning of the game, which is why you can see that she's actually 4 stars. Uh, but her purpose is to just be able to attack the boss from long range while I keep him locked down. Uh, Sonya is just like an extra DPS. Uh, she can help with killing the assassins. And Sonya is nice here because she can move again after killing units, and she can reach pretty far with Strike. Uh, the only thing I want to mention here is that you will see that I don't swap in Sonya very often because my Sonya is very, very frail. I have like zero HP enchants on her. And remember, she's also using equipment that has very low HP on it, like Twilight Star. Uh, so you're pretty much only going to see me swap her in to deal some damage and not much else. Uh, Shelfland is really only here to faction buff Licorice so that she can consistently cast mass heal. Uh, this isn't necessary, you can have Licorice buff herself if you have to, uh, but I just liked having the flexibility of having somebody else buff Licorice. Uh, Shelfanil really doesn't do much in this fight the way I use her. However, she is a holy unit and she has cleanse, so she's pretty good at taking out the slimes at least. Uh, so that's it for Team 1. Uh, team 2, as I mentioned in the previous video, was that you want the long range mages on this map, so I brought Hein, SP Hein, and Light of Genesis. Uh, obviously Light of Genesis I feel like is MVP on this map. Uh, the other units aren't super important. I did bring Almeida as the healer, and she's pretty useful because sometimes you want to heal people on the other side of the map. Uh, I just swap in Sophia whenever I feel like uh, Vargas isn't getting healed up enough. And as I mentioned, Vargas is uh, my tank choice here. His 3C is pretty useful for keeping Skull uh, occupied. Uh, I don't have much else to say about this team better than that. Uh, you, know, you, can, you can tell that I'm kind of rationing my better units for the third and fourth fights, especially the fourth fight. Uh, although I do burn both Elwyn and Yulia here. Uh, Elwyn obviously is because... Uh, he you need them to dispel on Hati. Uh, Yulia is just here because she does a lot of damage and she heals people as well, so uh, not much else to say. Okay, so team three. Uh, as I mentioned in the past, I bring both Juggler and Kyra on my team just to remove a lot of the healing pressure. Uh, that way I get to like move around my units very freely, especially Iris without needing to worry as much. Uh, pretty much everyone else is just lots and lots of damage uh, or whatever healing that they can provide. Uh, Leon, obviously, as I mentioned, is very important for this fight uh, since she can reposition himself after attacking. So I kind of brought Close as just like a backup emergency heal in case I really really needed it. Uh, but you can see that I actually brought like a DPS set on her essentially, with Faith and Discipline as well as a Breeze attacking set. So she's going to be able to contribute to damage when I really need it. Uh, so I also brought Wet Ham. Like Wet Ham is here for his attack command mostly. Uh, that's obviously very helpful. Uh, although one thing I really want to note is that if you bring Wet Ham, you don't want him to be out a lot of time if you plan on trying to stack on a zombie because uh, Wet Ham's talent does block passives, so that will stop the zombie from stacking. So you want to be careful of that if you want to screw around with the zombie. Other than that, I don't think there's a lot to say here. I will say that you'll notice that I don't have any of the Act Again DPSs built. Uh, I don't have Brenda, I don't have Shaltir, and I did not bring Sherry to this map. 
Um, the only big DPS unit, like or crazy DPS unit I brought is Rio, who is very useful here. And I imagine a lot of you don't have Rio built, but I'm assuming a lot of you have units like Iron Blood Commander, and maybe you can bring Sherry here as well if you feel like you can spare her. Uh, so even though I am bringing Rio, which I understand is not a very common unit to have built, uh, I feel like most of you will probably have some other option to make up for that. Uh, so the final map, I feel like, is the one you need to pay the most attention to in terms of your team composition. Uh, unless you just decide to go for like a speed kill method. Uh, but you can see I brought uh, Bernhardt with a blood sword. Uh, I have Rosalia here. Uh, Lucretia, I saved her for map 4. So Tiaras, Sherry, Illustrial, Luna. So you can see I'm like just bringing out all the big guns for the final map. Uh, you'll also notice that like a couple of my units throughout are actually 5 stars. Uh, so it's not like you need to have absolutely crazy maxed out units to beat this mode, although you do need to have a fair number of very built units. Uh, I will say that I am fairly lucky with the Twilight Star drops, so you can see that I brought a ton of Twilight Stars to this map. And on top of that, a little on the talks, but I think most people will understand why I brought a Juggler Plush on Luna, and that's just to extend her Wind God Realm. I don't think I'm really sacrificing that much M defense in favor of that. Obviously another Twilight Star on Luna would be helpful as well, but you know, I think it's more useful to be able to run more blocks, because I do think the beginning part of the map is the hardest part. Uh, so anyway, that's just a quick introduction to the teams I'm going to use. So let's just move on to the fights now. Alright, so here's the first fight. Uh, I'm going to have to apologize because I kind of screwed up when I was recording this, and I realized that I had my audio muted until like halfway into the fight. So uh, you're going to have to listen to just my voice for a while, and then silence when I stop talking, and then the music is going to suddenly cut in for no reason when we're uh, halfway through the fight. I don't have a lot to say here because uh, I think I already described this fight in the previous video pretty completely. Uh, like I said, you want to root the guy down using Emmerich plus SP Narm. If you don't have SP Narm, uh, you're going to have a lot of trouble towards the end of this map when he gets enough move to have uh, basically uh, two move again because he's going to have four move by the end of the map uh, and Emmerich only gives minus two. So he's going to have two move again and you can still avoid the breath attack if you want to. But it just means you have to arrange your units around him in a very specific way so that he can never get more than one unit uh, in in range of the uh, three-line breath. So you can see uh, at the beginning of the map I did have Sonya deployed. Uh, I immediately swapped out Sonya. I used up, my, uh, used up one of the charges right at the beginning. Uh, this is pretty much just to get some damage down on him to begin with. Not much to that. Now, some people, if you have lots of long range units, uh, you can opt to have Emmerich stand to like the corner of him so that he can't use his single target skill either. Uh, I I don't opt to do that. I just I just tank the hit. You know, I don't really care about it that much. It is annoying, but sometimes it's better to like just deal with it and uh, not have to think about the positioning as much for for multiple different attacks. Because honestly, the only one I think is scary is the breath one. Now this one is very annoying if uh, you don't have enough healing power because it does do a lot of the boss's stacks on you and that's the thing you have to manage the most during this fight because if you don't, uh, and, and you can see like for most turns I'm going to uh, cast the cast the heal first before I attack and that's because I want to get rid of as many of the debuffs as, as I can before I start attacking him. Because the debuffs as, you know, if you read it, it, it does reduce the damage you deal and increase the damage you take. So if you don't get rid of it, you are going to deal like no damage to the guy. And you're actually at real risk of running out of time on the map if you don't manage these stacks properly. So some turns, you know, some turns I don't attack with Emmerich at all if I feel like he's in danger or he doesn't have enough. Uh, he has too many stacks or something. So you can see why Liko is so useful here, and because uh, the terrain just takes away two stacks of it as long as you stay on the terrain, which is very very helpful. Uh, you know, here I can't I can't reach the boss because I had to move the bishop out of the way, so that's fine. I'll just use Lana to kill the slime here. The slimes really aren't a threat at all on this map as long as you're paying any kind of attention. Narm can take out the slimes in one shot as well. Uh, so I brought uh, Hydra's Bow on Narm uh, just so I could have some extra attack. Uh, if you want to, you alternatively you can do two things, right? You can bring an Uller's Bow if you really want to. 
because uh, you know you want to be able to. That way, you can outrange the assassins when they appear, or you can bring an extreme magic bow and have her attack in melee. That's also an option. Uh, or you could even like if you have the new bow, you can use that to have her skill from three range as well. Uh, although, like you know, if you run way across the map, then obviously you won't be able to use it. So now this is like you know it's just going to be a lot of boring turns of me attacking the boss. And you'll notice that I'm never going to like I'm not going to summon Heimdall until the very tail end of the map when I feel like I need the assistance to take care of all the stupid assassins. And you're also going to see me screw up at one point and get Lana killed, but it's not a big deal because it's near the end of the map, and you don't get penalized for having units die anyway, uh, aside from you know just having a unit dead. So, so if you have to if if you have to have them fight get kind of messy towards the end and have units die, you know it's that's fine. You know, because it's not, like I said, you're not going to get punished for having units die. Aside from having less units. So you don't want units dying uh, halfway through the map, but if you have to have, if you have to sacrifice units towards the end, it's not a big deal. So you can see I've pretty much uh, gone into a, a pattern here. Now, if you don't have SB Narm, for the first half of the map, one thing you could do is to just surround the guy. Just have uh, four units all around him. And that way he ha because he only has one move if you have Emmerich near him. Uh, so if you surround him, you won't be able to move at all. And you'll be able to do ba basically the same thing here. So this is the first time the uh, assassins are going to spawn. So you're going to see, like, first I'm going to heal with Lic Licorice so I can get rid of the stacks as usual. Uh, that's the only way I'm going to be able to kill these assassins in one shot. And these assassins are really dangerous. They actually do a lot of damage. And... Like, I actually feel like they're, they're they're kind of a bigger threat than the boss himself a lot of the time. Okay. So I'm probably gonna swap out a unit here. Get some damage on the boss, act again on Lana, and also use Rihanna's talent to get rid of the few stacks that was left on Lana. Uh, now this uh, this provided bishop doesn't really do anything. In my, well, he, he increases your damage dealt if you keep him alive, which is very important, actually. Uh, so you do want to heal him once in a while, and uh, Chris is helpful here for that purpose. Uh, so my Lana is four stars, as you see. And my Lana actually can't one-shot the assassins unless she's completely clean of the debuffs. So that, that was another function of having Liana act, act again as well as remove all her debuffs. Okay, so I got a buff back up here. So that's pretty much the only thing Shelf and Ale is going to do this entire map. She just buffs up. And you can see I brought Sky Archers on her. This is just so I can fly over the pillars, because the pillars can get in the way sometimes. Uh, really, the only thing you're going to see Shelf and Ill attack most of the time is that sometimes she's going to kill the slimes if I need her to. Uh, other than that, all she does is buff. Uh, the other thing I would allow to note is that if you bring Chris here like I did, and I keep forgetting to do this, but uh, you'll see me do it like once during the map, but you can do it more often if you want to. But remember that if you have Chris's exclusive, she gets to act again after killing a demon. So if you use her to kill one of the slimes, you can actually have her take two turns, uh, which can be pretty useful sometimes, uh, you know, for multiple reasons. First, like, first, like, uh, she attacks from true range, so she won't get countered by the slimes, nor will she get hit by the explosion, as long as you aren't attacking from a diagonal space. Uh, so she'll be able to clear a slime, uh, get a free heal on somebody, because, you know, she's probably using discipline or something, and then, uh, and then you can move back and have her attack the boss or something. So I think Chris is quite useful on this map if you don't have a lot of options. Uh, like I mentioned before, Rachel is quite good on this map. Maya can be good on this map. Uh, anybody who can like off heal and dispel 
is always going to be useful here because you like this map is very much a healer check as I've mentioned before. So you can see that I'm not like kind of thinking about it here because uh, remember like you you have to constantly avoid the breath so you need to constantly remember that you don't want anybody on a line three tiles wide. Uh, in any like cardinal direction from him so you got to make sure to do that uh, I actually do get hit by it once towards the end of the map because I screw up with uh, by somebody Heimdall in the wrong spot but uh, yeah like that that attack is very scary and it can you know if you don't handle it properly it can make things spiral out of control because if somebody dies too early in the map you're going to run out of units uh, you can't swap in units when needed and it just it makes a mess of everything yeah I don't think there's really a whole lot else for me to mention here, so I'm going to <laughs> stop the commentary for the first stage here. Uh, so you can move on to the next stage if you want to hear what I have to say about those. Uh, just use the timestamps below if you need to. Uh, so have fun watching the rest of the fight.
小チーフ少佐Okay, map number two here. Uh, like I said at the beginning, uh, I rationed a lot of my better units for the fourth map, especially. The only unit here that I knew I had to bring for sure was Light of Genesis. Uh, I feel like a lot of the other units here can be replaced. Uh, so, Light of Genesis is obviously useful for both being able to teleport people to the top of the map when I need to, and uh, she's also a long range mage, which is very important for two reasons. Number one is to hit the uh, hot to her skull when you're, you know, when you're praying at the top, and it's also to hit skull when, uh, well, any time really, because skull, uh, remember, skull kind of goes nuts on you if you don't have enough buffs, and it's kind of hard to get a suitable amount of buffs in modes like this because you can't get faction buffs, so you can't get the generic attack and defense buffs, and that could be kind of a problem sometimes. So you can see that I'm like just going uh, lay into Hati pretty heavily at the beginning here. It's not going to be difficult to kill Hati. I kill Hati on turn two. It's not too much of a problem. Uh, you know, instead of Elwyn here, you know, you can bring anybody who has a good amount of dispels. Uh, anybody who has like a sword soul type skill is actually pretty useful here because honestly, if you keep Hati in check. You only need to kill him, quote unquote, properly one time. So you don't even need to be a super consistent dispeller if you do it the same way I do it. 
Uh, you just need one good dispel attack, and then the rest of the time you just make sure Hati is taken out of the fight. So anybody who has a Sword Soul variant can pretty much fill Elvin's role here the way I'm using him. Uh -oh. My bad. <laughs> so uh, uh, Yulia is just here to do damage and heal other people, as I said. <laughs> uh, Vargas. Okay, so Vargas, uh, as you see, like uh, one one thing you want to remember with your tank is that he needs to have a certain amount of buffs so that Scott, uh, Skull doesn't just one shot them. Uh, with Vargas here, I am using a infantry troop. Uh, that's actually his best tanking troop to tank from 100% life because uh, obviously Stone Colossus don't get bonuses until you're at 70% life. So he actually doesn't have that many options other than Guardian Infantry here. Uh, his 3C uh, gives him enough buffs and a lot of them are undispellable, which is usually enough to keep him safe. Uh, one thing you want to look out for is that because uh, Skull is always giving you a bunch of random debuffs, is you know, as you can see right now, uh, Margus actually has a buff block. So you want to be careful of that. So if you need to, make sure to heal the tank uh, of any like really bad debuffs before you cast any uh, guard skills and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, I've made that mistake a couple times when I was screwing around with the map. Uh, alternatively, you can just bring a blood pack on the tank, right? Because there's no uh, the boss doesn't have a pre-battle fixed damage or anything, so you don't need to worry about it break breaking last rights or anything like that. Uh. So aside from Vargas, I think an easy replacement for him, uh, you know, I, I experimented around with this map with both Leiden and Espy Grenier. So what I'll say about Espy Grenier is that I think he can tank this fight quite well, but you don't have a safety net because he has no revive. And that's one thing that Vargas is nice to have for, uh, you know, he, you know, he has a safety net. In fact, he has like three safety nets because, because of his 3C. Uh, SP Grenier, I highly recommend that you you should probably bring uh, you should probably try out Phalanx troops or uh, yeah that's probably his best troop for this fight and I would also put last rights on him uh, I would not risk it with uh, a heavy armor piece with him and I would just use uh, I'll use last rights and make sure he's always at 100% life really. because I had a couple situations where I tried out SP Grenier and he actually got one shot by Skull from 100% life, and it wasn't like he got, you know, he lost all his buffs or anything, he just, he just kind of died. <laughs> uh, so that's one, my only recommendation if you decide to use Espy Grenier. Uh, Leiden, Leiden actually did have a little bit of trouble tanking uh, if you don't keep him healthy, so that's, you know, just another thing. Uh, like, I, like I said, uh, there is no pre-battle fixed damage or anything like that, so you can use Redeemers, and if you get, are able to keep out 100% life, uh, you will be able to get the Holy Light Protection pretty safely. Uh, alternatively, uh, and you know, this is, this is just an option, you could actually bring two tanks if you feel safe enough with the damage on this map, and swap out the tanks as, need, as needed, so then you, have to, you don't have to worry as much about healing up uh, both the debuffs and the fact that you have to deal with this annoying fixed damage thing every single turn. Uh, aside from that, you know, I, I don't think there's a whole lot to say here. Uh, this is probably... Yeah, this is, well, I, I don't want to say this is ne necessarily the most straightforward one, but you, you can see that like there's not going to be a whole lot to say for the rest of this map. Uh, I'm just going to keep Hati locked down here. Uh, like I mentioned in the video I made before, uh, you knock Hati down all the way down to 1% life or whatever before you take care of Skull. Uh, gets, uh, so get Hati back down to 1% life after, while he's praying and then get Skull uh, knocked out, take out Skull's shield, and then knock out Hati immediately. The only thing I would look out for when you're doing that is that make sure you have somebody that can still hit Hati after that, uh, after you get rid of Skull's shield, right? You don't want to accidentally knock somebody out when you didn't mean to. Uh, because then, uh, you know, it's immediately enemy phase and then uh, Hati will just run at you and uh, everything uh, everything will go out of control because Hati will probably walk towards you and then Skull will also walk towards you uh, and they will they might be within f five blocks of each other and then they will get the extra attack boost. Skull will one-shot your tank uh, and then if you don't have a revive, Skull will then go around one-shotting every single person until your entire party is gone. 
Uh, so that's really all I have to say about that. Uh, as far as the healers go, like I said, Almeida is very nice here because not only is she debuffing Skull uh, for attack and defense so to help uh, Vargas with the tanking, and, and you'll notice that I also brought attack intimidate on Vargas as well. That's actually a very nice option. Uh, but yeah, like Almeida also heals people way across the map, and because you can't really keep your party together for this map, uh, that's also very useful to have. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know there are other units that can do that. Elma can do that as well. So if you want to try out Elma, I think she can also be good here. Uh, another thing I want to recommend that you look out for is uh, don't break Tenio's headdress for whoever's standing next to the tank because if you get the random regenerate buff, uh, Skull can steal it, and he just recovers a ton of life when he's doing that. And it's just really annoying. Uh, you know, it just it just makes it a pain in the ass to kill him because it recovers based on HP percent. And uh, obviously, since these are bosses, that is a lot of HP. Uh, so anyway, there's, like I said, there's not much else to say. Like you just, uh, you're gonna see me repeat this pattern over and over. Just take out, uh, take out Hati, get him down to one percent life. Then take out Skull, get rid of, uh, or, all right, uh, yeah, and then get rid of Skull, get Skull's shield array uh, down. They both respawn. Take out Hati immediately because he's still at one percent life, and then you just repeat over and over until you're done. Uh, very straightforward map if you're doing it this way. Uh, in fact, uh, as far as the Covenant goes, you can see that I brought Freya on this map, but I don't think I really needed to. Uh, and a lot of people use Freya for the speed kill method on the fourth map, so if you want to, you can try beating this map without a Covenant. Uh, if you can do that, uh, then obviously that makes the other maps easier. Uh, I don't have a lot else to say anymore, so see you in the next map.
Okay, third map here. Uh, this is actually the one that I screwed up on the most, and you're gonna see that towards the end of the map. Uh, so I know, like, I've heard like a lot of people are having trouble with this map because it's... Here's what I'll say about this map. Uh, it takes a while for you to understand what exactly the order of operations it is you're supposed to be doing. Uh, you have to figure that out first, and it can take a while. Uh, uh, real quick, at the beginning of this map, uh, I really recommend that you re-roll until you get at least one unit that doesn't have any uh, empty debuffs, uh, which isn't that hard, like that's not a super rare occurrence. Uh, it's just that, you know, that makes your life a lot easier. Uh, so anyway, the, yeah, what I heard a lot of people were struggling with this map because uh, <laughs> it's really easy to screw up the order of operations on this map and just and then the, realize that you moved somebody to the wrong spot or you had someone out of range. Uh, you know, you just have to be mindful of it the whole time you're doing this map. That's really all I have to say. Uh, there's, I don't think there's a trick to that. You just need to play the map enough times until you realize, oh, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, and yeah, that is very annoying. Uh, but there's, there's, there's no way a guide is going to be able to help you with that. You're just going to need to play the map until you can like kind of get into it. So uh, you can see I'm passing all the debuffs on to Leon. So one thing to remember is that you want to pass it on to somebody who's already taken their turn, right? So they don't end their turn and burn down another uh, burn down another count uh, on the debuffs. So here you can see uh, I am using some skills in range of the zombie. You, If you get the zombie to 15 stacks, you can have the extension uh, be longer. And uh, to that end, uh, you can see I both use, like, I used a faction buff when I was in range of the zombie, and I used uh, chivalry in range of the zombie, even though I wasn't really using it for anything. I also brought uh, jugglers 3C just, to, just for that purpose as well. Uh, so for this breath attack, I would recommend that you have people tank it. You know, it's like, if you... You can try to uh, you can try to avoid it the whole map if you really really want to, but it just gets harder and harder. It's it's really hard to keep track with all the other things you have to juggle on this map. So I don't recommend it. I recommend that you have somebody uh, out here to tank it, and of course, uh, ideally it would be juggler plus somebody else. You know, juggler plus the wolf maybe, or juggler plus Kaira and heal people up. Uh, so you can see right now, uh, so you can see I use the 3C in range of the zombie. Uh, that doesn't really, you know, that's just to get him to 15 stacks so I can extend, extend, the, uh, uh, extend the turns on the countdown effects longer. Just healing up here. And like I mentioned before, uh, Leon is really, really useful uh, for be to be the one to kill the zombie because you want to be able to reposition after killing him so they can pass it on to a specific unit. Now, uh, another thing to note about passing these debuffs around, uh, you don't pass them all at once to one unit. So some of them are like counted separately. So you want to make sure that uh, once you have them all on one unit and you're passing it to somebody else, that is that the, the person you're passed to is the only person in range that you can pass to. Otherwise, if you have two or three units around you, you might pass different ones to different people around you. And obviously that just makes a mess of everything. So you can see that I... Uh, one thing you'll see in this clear is that you're, you're going to see me pause very often. Uh, just just to make sure I'm moving to the right spots for everybody. Uh, here I actually, like right there I actually screwed up and I, you know, and you guys see me screw up a couple times, right? Uh, so it's not a completely unforgiving map, uh, especially for the, the, the corrosion debuff, the one that lowers defense. That's the one you need to worry about the least. Uh, obviously the one you want to worry, the, the one you're most worried about is the uh, the fixed damage one because that just instantly wipes your party. And the attack buff one is also important just because you want to keep as many of them as you can uh, for whenever you're, you're ready to fight the boss. Uh, and another note about the corrosion debuff is uh, no matter I think no matter what you do. 
uh, unless you perfectly extend the zombie uh, up to 15 turns, uh, or, or the, up to 15 stacks every single time, you are probably going to run out of corrosion turns at some point, so you're going to debuff your team with the defense down at some point, and it's not it's not a big deal as long as your uh, your units have enough HP. I mean, you'll take more damage from the AOEs a bit, but usually it shouldn't be enough to one shot you, even with the defense down from corrosion. So uh, yeah, <laughs> there's not a whole lot else to say here. Uh, you know, this this is one of those maps where you just have to practice it a couple times before you can really get it down, and that's really the truth. It's a very mechanics-heavy map. And there's not much else to say about that. Uh, so you're going to see... Okay, so towards the end, what I'm going to screw up on is that what you're going to see is that I'm actually going to run way past turn 17. So turn 17 is the is the turn where you should start prepping to have the uh, the dog explode on the boss. Uh, what you're going to see is that I got <laughs> I got too distracted, like, uh, just doing a map. And I got... I kind of, like, uh, turned my brain off. And I ended up uh, going all the way to turn 20 <laughs> with stacking the debuffs. And then I was just like, oh, wait, I need turns to actually kill the boss. <laughs> so that's where I ended up using my first clock charge in this recording. And I'm actually going to cut that out of the video because there's really no reason for you to need to see that. Uh, you are going to see me use my second clock charge. And that's just me screwing up again at the end of the tail end of the map. Now, it is nice that uh, you do get two clock charges now, even as a free-to-play player. So that's really nice as a safety net. Uh, but yeah, like that's that just goes to show how easy it is to kind of screw up on this map, and that's really, I feel like that's the real challenge here. Uh, you having some kind of input error, uh, more so than the boss itself, because the boss himself really doesn't isn't really that big of a threat. I feel like uh, I will say, however, that the boss can hit very hard, and one mistake you see me uh, do here is that uh, I brought Golden Knights on Leon. And that was actually a terrible idea. <laughs> You're gonna see towards the end of the map that when I attack with Leon, he's actually going to kill himself because of the Cav animation. Uh, because when you have Cav hero with Cav soldiers, the hero runs in front of the soldiers and he just gets himself killed. So uh, yeah, that that actually ends up being a problem. So because I can't take full advantage of Leon uh, with all the buffs stacked on top of him, and you know even with that, even with me screwing up as much as I did. I was still able to take out the boss without much problem, so I think that goes to show that there is a, f a little bit of wiggle room on this map. Uh, aside from that, you know, uh, you know, make sure that everybody's lined up properly before you blow up the wolf towards the end of the map. Uh, you're gonna have to prep like the, the preceding turn or two. Uh, make sure that people are. If you bring an attack command like I have with Wet Ham here, uh, make sure to use Wet Ham's. Uh, make sure to wet, that Wet Ham is in range. Of everybody else, so that he can give them attack, uh, attack command. Uh, aside from that, I don't think there's a whole lot to say. Uh, you know, it, like I said many times already, it, it's all about doing this map over and over until you kind of understand the input you need to do in order to uh, in order to beat the map. And yeah, this is just one of those maps you gotta practice multiple times before you can really get it down. It's it's really annoying. Yeah, that's all I gotta say. If you guys have more questions about this, you know, you can ask them below. Uh, but I don't I don't think I can really give any more advice other than that one. This is one of those maps, like I said, that you have to do over and over <laughs> until you really understand what's happening. Uh, so that's all I gotta say. Uh, enjoy watching the rest of the map and enjoy watching when I screw up. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one.
で。
勝利は目前準備完了です。目前だ。
All right, here's the fourth map. So, uh, so I decided to do this like kind of the conventional way, which is basically bring a bunch of Ragnarots, bring a bunch of Twilight Stars, fix damage, and use Thor to try to take him out. Uh, I do kind of do. I don't want to say I'm doing a speed kill because you know I, I still have to deal with the mechanics. And the most annoying thing about this map is really just remembering that you need to move four blocks every single time during the first three turns of this map. Uh, yeah, including the Covenant, right? Like you can see, like the Covenant needs to move four blocks as well. A uh, couple things that you can keep in mind: uh, you can save up the warrant buff that you get when you move four blocks if you put them into reserve after getting it. So that can be useful sometimes. Uh, because the warm, the like the warmth buff can protect you from dying to uh, frostbite the, uh, for one turn. So if you have somebody in reserve that has the warmth buff, you can use that to your advantage and just keep them safe for that one turn. Uh, so I put down Rosalia's sword first. I used uh, Tiaris's 3C here. So Luna is actually using a teddy bear or uh, the juggler plushie just to extend her Wind God Realm. This just makes it a lot easier for me. Uh, you know, it's just it's just really annoying to sometimes like because the Moby Down uh, is a real headache, and I use a couple three move units here. 
So when Got Realm just helps with that a lot. Uh, the puppet, you know, uh, there is like an RNG factor to it. Uh, you know, I kind of hope that the boss doesn't do the uh, hunting debuff on the uh, on the puppet too much, especially towards the last turn. Because if he does that, uh, you know, you kind of have to have the puppet die on purpose. Otherwise, the, the uh, her third skill, which is the AOE, will just kill you. Okay, so you know, as you see, the uh, the Ada has already spawned, so I kill it using Lustreal. I have, I use her three C so that I can get the extra forest blocks or you know, grassland buffs or whatever, so I can walk back to the hammer and get more stacks on Thor. Uh, getting a bunch of stacks on Thor is really helpful for the first part of this map, just to make sure that you are doing enough damage. You can see that's what I'm doing. You know, I'm just making sure everybody is attacking in range of the hammer, getting lots of, of uh, hammer's Thor stack, uh, Thor's hammer stacks here. So uh, remember that I dropped down Thor uh, next to the Lancer on the right, and that's pretty much to root him in place, to, uh, so I can do this. Uh, you know, I have Deeplet buff up. Uh, reduce everybody's cooldowns, and, th and then I attack the boss from uh, two range. Just do some damage, uh, and to stack up uh, Thor's hammer a bit more. And by ending turn next to the Lancer, because the Lancer cannot move, uh, you know he's not going to think, uh, okay, I need to guard the boss because it can't reach her. So instead, it just attacks Deedlet, and because Deedlet is a double infantry unit, I do counter for a lot of damage there. So now there's like a bunch of wind. Uh, the, I have the storm buffs on the boss. Sherry gets rid of all of them pretty easily alongside Thor's hammer. So bringing Bernhardt. Uh, you know you gotta remember to you gotta remember when to sub in units. Uh, remember that Bernhardt has his aura, so uh, that helps with you know killing her quicker. So while Bernhardt's command debuff is still on her, you know, I'm just going to land her with all my other units. Okay, so here you have to remember, move four blocks. And this is something I forgot over and over when I was uh, screwing around with this map. So I'm just checking the range on the puppet's uh, switch range here. Uh, so I walk within range of the hammer and attack the boss. So, puppet. Walks all the way across, shifts the Lucretia back into one of the safety holes or whatever. Uh, so unfortunately, because the golem has uh, has the debuff, you know, the, the boss decided to give the golem the debuff over and over, which is annoying. But you know, you can't always rely on her not doing that. So whatever. So I'm uh, probably going to be losing the golem this turn. So remember that you want to get back into the, the ditches if you can, because if you get if you get hit by the boss's various skills, uh, you know, she does root you in place. So so Rosalia using Silver Spear so she can move again after attacking, uh, moving into the pit. Last person, swap out Deedlet, because Deedlet is, uh... I don't want Deedlet to be out in the open and taking uh, the boss's AoE and getting rooted down. So I'll just do a normal attack here. It's just to help charge up the... 
Thor a little bit more. And as you saw, like, I had uh, TRs with a warmth buff, so I didn't need to move our four blocks, like I mentioned before. So, you know, I already, I've already gotten the boss under 50% at this point, so the second add spawns here. So just take him out. Uh, so you can see I brought both uh, Crystal Dagger and Slayer's Emblem on uh, Illustrial. Uh, actually, without both of those things, I don't think my Illustrial was able to one-shot the uh, the ad very consistently. So you can saw, uh, so you can see that I lost the puppet, which is annoying, but I can't do anything about that. Heal, get all the way back up. Remember, you have to swap out the person with the hunt debuff uh, towards the end of the third turn because if you do not, uh, the boss, uh, the boss's AOE does what is it, plus like 300% damage or something, which is basically instantly wiped, wiping you. So I don't think there's a whole lot else to say about the fight anymore. Uh, you can see I'm just being careful not to move less than 4 blocks, balancing all the frostbite. Uh, this is the last turn I need to do that. The next section of the fight is the like the thunderstorm section. So the only thing I have to say about that is that you know, just make sure you stand in the water when you need to. Uh, with the squids, you're gonna see me kind of screw up with the squids. Like I should have like I should have used shield dash at one point with the burn heart, and I end up not doing that properly. Uh, and towards the end of the fight, it gets kind of messy. But like I said before, uh, if you have to, if the, if the fight has to get a little bit messy for you to be able to finish it, you know it's not a big deal. As long as you take out the boss. Uh, so this is the Thor method. Uh, you know, like I said, you want to bring as much fixed damage as you can. Not not only because that makes Thor stronger, because Thor did so much of the damage as you saw. And another another reason is that without enough fixed damage, you can't charge up Thor fast enough to summon him a second time towards the end of the fight. And uh, that's really what is able to take out a huge chunk of this boss's life. Uh, so yeah, uh, nothing much else to say. Uh, hopefully, this, uh, hopefully these clears were, were useful to you guys who are still struggling with these fights. Uh, you know, if you have, if you still have any questions about them, you know, be sure to ask them below. I'll try to answer them. Uh, I know these fights can be pretty tough, uh, so good luck with them. Uh, you know, hopefully you'll be able to clear them soon. Okay, I'll see you guys in another video.